everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. It's a very gray day, a very gray March day, but you know, that means April's on the way, spring's on the way, there's flowers on the way, warmer weather, and hopefully less gray days. But it also means that this current annual catalog has just a little over a month left. Um, so I have posted my walkthrough and um, like the goat set is one of the ones that I said you might not you might want to take a second look at it's gone so stuff starting to sell out and once it sells out it's gone forever um so that video is up the video i'm doing today actually is from the january to june mini catalog and as the title says it goes through june i do have a couple of retiring products on today's card so it's kind of a mix and match but i wanted to let you know that that video is up there's a bunch of stuff that's um, 50, 40, 20% off, a lot of stuff. So you can go to my website and you can download the retiring list. You can see all the stuff that's on sale or you can head over and um, print that list off and then go through. Um, I walk through, you can see I have the, um, I go through and I mark all of my things. I think this is one of the sets that has sold out. Um, those of you that are in my online retreat, I got it done early. So it's going to go out in the mail for sure tomorrow. Monday was my target day that it had to go out. Um, but tomorrow is Saturday and it's ready. Uh, we just have to, it's all packed, but it's not packed in its packaging and the labels have to be printed. So my husband will help me get that together this evening and then it will be in Saturday's mail. First thing I always am so happy when I have something done a, a day ahead. So you're going to love the cards. They're really pretty. And of course, when I was putting it together, I didn't know what was on the retiring list. And we're using the theme of the retreat with specialty papers. So uh, we're going to use a specialty paper. All the retreat stuff still right here on my desk. So a lot of the colors on today's card. And then one of the specialty papers. Those are on it. But anybody who loves specialty papers, they took a hit. Now, of course, as a demonstrator, we've already seen the new catalog, not in print. I don't know where the specialty papers are, but take a look at that page. A lot of them are on sale. A lot of them are going. You can see all of my um, X's and O's. But if you want a new catalog, here's how I do my new catalogs. I don't let Stampin' Up! send them because while it's convenient for me, it's not convenient for you. And sometimes it takes weeks to get them. And I don't want you to wait weeks because I know I like to have mine and hold it in my hands. And I want my customers to have it as soon as I can get it to you and hold it in your hands too. So I order them the day that I can. I... Um, usually two day ship them. So, um, sometimes I overnight them, but this year that gets them to me on Saturday, which does absolutely no good to me or you because I don't, I try not to work on the weekends. So I will two day them. I will get, that means they get them. I will get them the first week in April. I think we can order them April 3rd. Um, so a third or fourth, I don't remember when we can order them. Um, I will have them. The first people that will get them are the people that ordered from me in March because they will go out with my March VIP videos and my March thank you gifts. So and if, if you want your catalog the fastest way possible from me, place any size order in March. And then when I send your March thank you gifts, you'll have it. Then as soon as I have those packaged up and sent out, I will be doing my March, my April club packaging. So that will go out around the 15th, 16th. And once the club order, the club packages are out, so you can join April club if you don't order in March. And I will um, have those out and then everybody else. So all of my catalogs will be in the mail by like April 20th around then. Um, I don't know what day of the week that is, but no, by the third week in April, they will all be in the mail. Um, and Stampin' Up, I don't know, they get them out by around that time, but they go s the slow boat mail. And so sometimes it takes, it takes a while. It can take like four weeks to get them. So that's why I do them that way. And if you have placed an order with me from September, any size order, then you get it. If you've only taken a class from me, then you need to let me know if you need a catalog because I pull my, num my names and addresses from Stampin' Up! spreadsheet. And if you've only taken a class up since September, which means you have product because you get product in my classes a lot of the time, um, your name's just not gonna appear on there. So you need to shoot me a quick email. And all the information is in an upcoming email. You will wanna watch for my try it class because that class will fill up. Um, because there's only so much physically possible that my husband and I can package and that class fills up um, and details are for that will be upcoming and that will probably registration will probably open for that right after my club goes out for April so mid-April 
So today I'm gonna do flowering rain boots because it's very appropriate for this gray day. Um, I was feeling a little bit sorry for myself because I have a minor dental appointment this afternoon, but one of my best friends just had major oral surgery and her husband just texted right before I went on. So I should really um, get this in the mail to her, rain or shine, I'm here for you. But she's not. he said she's probably not gonna remember today because it was major, major. And she has a couple um, weeks of recovery. So, you know, I can't feel sorry for myself, but it's a good sleeping day. She's asleep because nobody wants to be out in today's weather. In fact, it's going to be cold, which it's March in Indiana. Um, my magnolia tree is in nearly full bloom and it looks beautiful. And I usually get two days of enjoyment before frost takes them all out and the blooms look disgusting. But you know, we do that in Indiana. We grow a magnolia tree so they can die. <laughs> So the paper that I'm going to use today is one that we're also using in my retreat. And if you didn't sign up for retreat, it's fabulous, super fabulous. It's too late to get anything mailed to you. But by Monday, it will also be too late to just do the, on, the just the videos and the PDF. So you have till Monday if you want to do that. So I'm going to use the watercolor paper. And this make, is also going to be in the upcoming catalog. It's the Fluid um, 100 watercolor paper. There's a lot you can um, work with it. So we're going to do... It's kind of no line, but it's kind of not. It's kind of my own little version of some watercolor here. And then I have Coastal Cabana and then a little fun white background. So let's do, first we're just gonna stamp it. So I've grabbed, so I think the stems in this set are really designed for the tulips. And I don't think they really match the daisies, but I wanted to no line watercolor the daisies. so. The stems don't quite match up. It's okay. You don't need to tell me in the comments that it doesn't match up because this is art and I wanted to do it that way. So if they don't match up and you tell me, I'll just delete your comment because I know, but it's art. Sometimes when people tell me stuff that I chose to do, I'm like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes they leave your comment and sometimes like, yeah, I'm a grown up and I want to do it that way. So that's the way I did it. So here we have the daisies and I did those in papaya. Here's the granny apple green. And I'm using the little spongy pad. And anytime you stamp on the watercolor cardstock, you need to hold your pad down. I mean, your ink, your stamp down just a fraction longer, just to give this paper a little bit of time to absorb the ink. Although since we're going to also watercolor on top of this, it's not quite as important, but you just get a much better image. See how the papaya is a little bit hard to see. It, this would be a really good color if you're gonna do true no-line watercolor. Um, we're gonna kind of do an adapt, adaptation of it, but see how pretty that is? Super pretty. So that's Granny Apple. Then let's get Fresh Freesia. So these are um, not, these are in colors, but they're not leaving in colors. I don't have any of the in colors that are leaving. So here's these fabulous um, rain boots. So wellies, if you live, if you're watching me from the United Kingdom or down under, um, this time of year in 2017 and 2018, we were in Scotland and Ireland. And on this particular day in 2017, we were where I used to live in Scotland. And so I just posted that picture on my Facebook page give this a bunch of time to soak in that freesia. And I remember when I was first moving there, I was hmm, 18 or 19 when I got the list, 19, I guess. And it told me that I should bring Wellingtons. And you know, this was way before the internet. <laughs> and I didn't know what they were. My mom didn't know what they were. I'm like, I don't know what a Wellington is. I was also supposed to bring a duvet. And I didn't know what a duvet was. People know these things now because, you know, well, like Downton Abbey, there's just things we know now that we didn't know then. And we can look them up if we don't know them. So now I'm going to cut these out. And I'm just going to stick the whole thing through my cut and emboss. So let's do, I'm not going to do all of them at once. And here's why. Because I want them all to cut perfect. And so the more things you lay on here at once, the more lining up you do. And then if you put your thing on top it might move them all and so then you've just wasted a bunch of time so let's do this little fun little trellis and it fits this direction and then let's do these because they're the farthest away so let's get our flowers our little things of daisies and that's upside down maybe 
There we go. So we, let's do these two. That way, if I lay this on and that moves, it's just a little tip for you. I'm going to hold on to that one because this one doesn't matter what it does. But how many times have you lined up all three of those things and then you go to put your top plate on? It just takes one pass through. The watercolor cardstock is thick, but you, you line all of them up and then you put this on top and all uh, one of them moves. And then you line it back up and you put your plate on top and then another one of them moves. So it's just easier, I think, to just do some of them. I love this trellis and you can use this on a ton of different cards. It didn't come out, so I'm just gonna leave it. Now let's get our stems. And if you want, you can just roll this through because it's easier sometimes now if, because it could be that I lay these on because this paper's thick and see how it's kind of, it bends up after one pass through. Always pull your plate out first because if you're doing this and putting it down, then more than likely it's going to bend to, and plus I'm sitting down, it's better to stand up. But you know, I'm filming and my chair makes a noise when I stand up. But I'm holding these tight until the plate grabs it and still holding it and then there's less, um, less of a chance that it'll move. So pull those through. Now's the fun part. So we have all our images and look at this trellis. It does make a tiny bit of a mess, but if you wanna keep all these little squares, you could. If I kept all of the um, trash that I have from all of the projects, but how fun is that? I would have more of a mess than I already have. So we have these. I have a little bit more use of my, this, you know, sometimes I don't know what order to show you stuff in because I could pull it back out. But let's just go with this for a second. And my table is bad, 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 and on tour is coming up, and my goal is to clear the table off, and my husband's going to repaint it. So I'm just going to paint on here. I know my girlfriend who had the dental surgery, it drives her crazy when they just paint shit on my table. So I've inspired her to always have scrap paper under her when she films her videos. Now, here's another tip for you. I have my coffee, and today I'm painting with water. So two things. If you do this... Um, make sure you know which is your coffee and which is your painting water because you don't want to be dipping your painting water. It's not toxic, but let me take a sip of coffee. The painting water is also um, my water, my drinking water from yesterday. But then um, about halfway through the day, my cats decided it was also their water. So it stopped being my drinking water, but it's fine to paint with. It was still here this morning because I'm like, whatever. I'm going to use our water painters. Now, if you watch my channel, you see me use them a lot. I love them. Usually I fill the barrel with water, but for this particular technique, I want a little bit more control when we get to the second step. So I'm going to use my cat water. <laughs> I'm just gonna dip it in here. So let's start with the rain boots. And the first thing I'm gonna do is on these clear spots here, I'm just gonna add some water and start letting that, um, the white spots have time to get a little bit of soaking going on because we're gonna add a different color. We're gonna add at least an, one color more to all of our images. Now that we've got that, you can see I'm putting a lot of water on here. And I'm gonna take my glasses off because I cannot see up close with my glasses on. So now you couldn't do this. You could do a little bit of it with shimmer white. You can't do it with white or vanilla basic because they will just pill. This is way too much water to put on those. You can also do it, if I was you and I was gonna do this, I would do it before I ran it through the machine, but you have to let it dry then all the way before you cut them out. And obviously I don't wanna take that time to run them through. Now there's this line right here in the middle that I'm trying not to get too terribly wet. It is the line that separates the two boots. Okay, so we've got that. Now I'm going to switch to Highland Heather. And I've squished some ink down here on the top. And when I hit where this water is, first I'm gonna get the white areas. And again, I'm gonna leave that white one there because that's really supposed to be like space. 
And now you can see where that water is on there. It's just kind of pulling that in. Okay, on the one that I originally did, I let it go a little bit longer and dry and put one more coat. But on this one, I'm going to try something else because of drying time. I'm going to add a layer of gorgeous grape. Not so much a layer, but on the other one, because it had time to dry, I did a little bit of an outline. So we're going to try this with gorgeous grape because it's a little bit of a darker color. Looks pretty good. So people often ask me how I get my ink pad pressed so down, pressed down so hard that I end up with so much ink. That is not. I add a couple of drops of refill off into my tops because it's the same thing and then it's easier to have so much. Isn't that pretty? So it's gonna look a little bit different than my other one because this has a stronger color, but I really like it. So now you wanna make sure that you rinse all this out. So if you have, um, your barrel filled, you can use it with your barrel filled. It's just preference, those out of the way. Then you would just squeeze it. Now, when I go to, so much stuff on the table because all of the retreat stuff just is shoved to the side and they're doing 12 projects. It's a lot of cards and it's a lot of stuff on the table. So I usually just take my chamois and then you can dry it all the way off on here. Just pick one of the corners that doesn't have a lot, all the ink from your other projects and then it's dry and it's clean. So now let's move to our flowers that are not going to match my stems perfectly. And I do realize this, so you don't need to tell me. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna squish my papaya. Now this, I know some of you are gonna think you can't do it, but again, it's art and it's meant to look like watercolor. So I'm gonna take my papaya first, and the places where it's a little bit dark, I'm just gonna kinda, of, and my brush is pretty dry. So just kinda of put a few places, we're not gonna go for many, and I want my, my brush to get drier and drier as we go. And before I go to the dentist, um, I don't have on like my outside clothes. I still have on sweats and I have on my work sweats. So here's what I do is I can put them here. So this shirt is perfect for this because look, it's got papaya right there. It's just an old Navy sweatshirt that is inexpensive and I work in it. So I've just got this and I'm going to kind of pick up any standing water, but again, it's the watercolor cardstock. So it soaks in pretty fast. 
And I just want some of those places, and you can see it when you're working on it close up, where they have kind of filled in. Where did I put the stamp case? On these, especially in these light colors, see where it has these dark images? So those have more ink on them. So those are kind of the places that I've kind of hit. Um, and just let those fill in. So that's it for our papaya. Now I'm gonna grab some mango. And I, again, I'm just letting my brush get drier and drier. I'm not gonna add any more water to it, more than likely. And these, I'm just gonna get the centers. And I want them to be pretty mango-y. I think it's a nice bright color. It's our brightest yellow. And again, you can put quite a lot of water on it because it's gonna just soak down into that paper. And it's kind of grabbing some of those lines. They are, usually have a tissue on the table. I didn't need it last time, but the longer I've used this brush, the wetter it's gotten. And there is no water in here at all. That's just holding it. Um, so you know what? It's my work shirt. Because I don't have, I didn't bring a paper towel over here because I was just using my chamois before. Now, this is the part that some of you are going to be like, I can't do that. You can. You can do it because it doesn't have to be perfect. Just try it. I'm going to go to Calypso Coral. And again, I'm going to try to get my brush pretty dry. And I am just going to draw loops. They're not going to match. I can start with some of them that match. And I'm just going to go till my brush gets no color left on it. That's still wet. <laughs> it's very wet. And that's a pretty dark color to put on my shirt. So hang on, I'm gonna go get a paper, t a tissue. Just soak that right up. I think it's just pulling water up into the barrel from all the times I've washed it. Cause at the end, um, I washed it, washed it because we're gonna do a flicking thing at the end. This is better. I try to go over here where you haven't gotten any water in my pad. So just put it on and we're just drawing loops. I'm kind of following them, I'm kind of not. And it's gonna look super pretty at the end and it's gonna look like watercolor. So you're, I know that you all sat at your desk in school because you liked art and it wasn't real art. It was, I'm, happy, I'm finding joy in drawing these daisies on my math paper. So just go back to that. And you're literally just drawing little ovals and kind of using the stamp as a guide. It is not perfect and it is not matching them up. You can start with the larger flowers. I'm gonna get a different one of these. I have, I have lots of these. I don't know why I feel the need to keep using this one. So just keep drawing the little U's. And as you run out of ink, you want them to get lighter and lighter because that helps with the watercolor effect. I would start with this, this instead of your rain boots because the drier the brush, the better this works. You can see where that papaya is just underneath. It's just some of the petals look like they have shading and some of them don't. And you don't have to get them all because again, it's watercolor. If you go to the store and you just kind of look at some of the, the inexpensive watercolors or even like Monet, they're not perfect. So I got that. Now I'm gonna go back to my mango again. And now that that's had a second to dry, I'm not gonna clean that off. I'm gonna let it mix. And kind of hit that middle again. 
if you want to do another coat of the papaya, but I want some of my leaves to be white. There's our daisies. I'm gonna clean this off. And since I got the tissues, I'm just gonna use this to clean it. The um, chamois takes the color out a little bit better than the tissue, but we'll clean it off at the end. Now I'm gonna do these. And the granny apple is a nice dark color. So for the most part, it will color itself. So just kind of trace inside and as it bleeds, Try to keep each individual leaf, like color each individual leaf, because you'll be able to see where there's supposed to be space in between the leaves and where there's a leaf. Like this leaf right here kind of turns over. On my other one, I added too much water. I, for one, I didn't stamp it as well because I didn't hold my ink thing down as, as long. So it was harder for me to tell that there was space in between. This one's going to be much prettier. And then I'm just gonna take a tad bit of Coastal Cabana because that's the color that our card base is. And I'm just gonna add a tiny bit to the places where it's got the shading. And not everywhere, just a little bit. And that just kind of um, coordinates the something in our images to the back of the card. And then I'm going to take this. I'm just going to lay it in here since I don't have any scrap paper. And I just want it to kind of look watercolored. I don't want it to all be. And then I'm gonna go back to the other brush and you'll see why it's so wet. Wash this off and I'll clean that with my chamois in a minute. So leave that open. Got a little bit more watercoloring to do, but first I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna grab my black pad. And then there's really cute sayings in this set. I just went with rain or shine, I'm here for you. just the wet one. This is the wet one. So now you want to get it really wet and that is why my other one because I left it sit in my cup like this while I did this that and so it had obviously soaked some water up into the barrel. Get a bunch of um, Coastal Cabana there. So you have this. This is one of those times when you want to have more than what you think because if you follow me you know that I always tell you when you start put stuff on your card, you're like, oh, that's plenty. And then you put the things on your card and it gets all covered up. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of this. It's kind of like what I do when I flick my blends, but we're not using blends on this. But now we have some ink on here and then take your bone folder and we're gonna add some raindrops. And I'm putting more on this because the first time I thought I had plenty and they, a lot of them got covered up. And you have to be careful though, this is just plain basic white cardstock and if you get it too wet, then it's gonna pill. And this is also why my table's always a mess. Cause I clean it off and then the paint comes off and you know, it is what it is. It's art. It's a very old antique work table that we painted white. So every time I get it dirty and we wash it off, then it goes back to its original color. So we've got this. Now there's one last little step grab my boots and my flowers and make sure they're dry but look nothing's coming up because that watercolor paper dries so fast I love these boots and I'm gonna take my um, gray granite basic gray might be a better choice except that gray granite is one of our retreat colors so it's laying on the table 
And then I want the one that's the dry one, but now I don't know that's this one. So I want it to be dry and I'm gonna take some little snippets and I'm just gonna add some dots of color. To the middles of my flowers. Now, if your card is wet, they're just gonna kind of soak into the background. So you wanna make sure it's dry. That's why I did this step, step after doing the others. And then over here, if you look at the stamp set, there is a buckle right here. And I tried it on my other one and my card was too wet, so it didn't work. So let me see if it's dry enough on this, I can get the buckle. Yeah, this is much drier. I tried it when it was I was still doing the boots. Again, it's watercolor. It doesn't have to be perfect. So just add that fun little buckle. That looks way better than my other one. Okay, get that gray off of there. Now, there were two things in the catalog. I was very, very sad. So if you watched my walkthrough, you know what they are. Because I have been on a kick of using both of them all of the time on all of like probably 80% of my cards have featured one or the other. And on this one, I'm going to use it. So if, if you're watching this, it may sell out. It may be gone. Or if you're watching it, it may, it's gone. Um, but this is our tasteful textile folder. There is nothing, nothing, nothing like it coming in the new catalog. So if you want to add just a little bit of texture that makes your card look like linen, you have to get it now before it's gone because it will be gone and then there's nothing to replace it. So I'm just going to stick this in here and then you'll kind of see. It doesn't matter if you run a slightly damp um, piece of paper. Some people, in fact, spray their paper with water before they run it through a folder. I never have been one of those people because I'm kind of lazy. I'm a little bit of a lazy stamper. If there is a step that I don't think you need, you do need the gray plate, or if you have the old blue plate, if you have a big shot, um, you don't need to see me do this. I'm just gonna roll it through over here. But this is an amazing plate, and I, if you do your designer series paper through it, it just makes everything look like he used super fancy cardstock. Look, and they took it away. I can't believe it. Because when I saw it was on the retired list, I looked at that first because I was trying to get the list out to you and I was trying to get retreat done. So I didn't let myself look at the catalog. I missed the days of when we went to events and you know, you were at an event and I wasn't actually working. Well, I was working, but not working, working. Um, and we saw the catalog, like, so you realized what was missing kind of before you saw the list. But I saw those were gone and I was like, I couldn't wait to see what they replaced it with. But they replaced it with nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so if you want something, you got to get it now. So now you just have to put this together. Super easy. I have my glasses off. So now looking for these things, I should put them back on. I can see up close pretty well. Just put this on. Coastal Cabana is a beautiful color, but now I'm going to switch to my fine tip glue to get this trellis on here. So I did, if you hold it in the middle, then you can get the top and the bottom. Kind of there. And then you just need a couple of sections, but you don't need all of it. That's enough to hold it. The fine tip glue this is currently in available. It's not in the catalog. In the new catalog, it has uh, its own spot back in the catalog. So I don't have to tell you all the time that you have to look it up on the website or go to my website to get the number. Because it's next to the seal. It's my favorite adhesive because of that fine tip. And I love the fact that it has this little needle here. And you just slide that in and then your glue doesn't dry up. Now you could put the rest of this together with some um, dimensionals if you want it to pop. The watercolor cardstock is already such a heavy cardstock that I didn't want my card to be any heavier. Whoops. Don't want to cover up my fun saying. So stick that there. And then if, like I was torn whether I wanted this to go over, above. Um, so I put it here. And I didn't color over my boots or my stems because I wasn't sure which was going to show. Now, in this one, it's going to be 
I really wish that the die had a slit in it. I'm gonna put the stems on the top again. I really wish the my little boots had a slit because I feel like it should go right in here. Well, maybe I'll do it in here that way and then we'll just color the stems. Now, you see, these don't exactly match up because I know it's designed for the tulips, but if you squish them down, then you just have leaves and they don't have to be perfect ladies because it's art. So you don't need to tell me. I know somebody's gonna tell me. Probably more than one, more than one somebody. So y'all like to help me. And sometimes I need help. But lots of times it's like this and I'm like, it's okay, it's art. So now I'm gonna grab this real quick and I'll show you how to fix that because it bothers me when there's a line. But you can fix it because it's art. I think this is the really wet one. Maybe not. I don't know. So just take this. It is because it's got Bermuda Bay in it. Let's grab the one, oh, not Bermuda Bay, Coastal Cabana. And the nice thing is if it bothers you, it's your art. So when you make the card, use the tulips. But the, see, the thing with the tulips on this card is you can't do all of the fun like little swoopies. And I wanted to show you how to do the little swoopies. So if you do the tulips, they'll just all be one. You can do a couple of colors. You can't put little centers and you can't do little swoopies. But when it's your card, you can do it just the way you want. Like there was one time I used the cloud things to be waves and that bothered a lot of you. But if you make the card, you don't have to and then it won't bother you. Because that's the nice thing about this is you can do it exactly how you want. Now these are retiring. And if you like the rain boots, I highly suggest you get the clear and silver epoxy um, embellishments because they make, I have moved everything a hundred times, here they are, um, perfect raindrops. And uh, because they're retiring and I have these that I need to use up, I'm going to put five of them. But they're great raindrops. These are the silver, they are clear. I would have to open a new package of them to get my clear ones, so the silver are gonna work. Here's a tip when you use them because they kind of, they don't have to be straight. Again, it's art and raindrops don't fall straight, right? Um, I think it looks prettier if they're at least kind of straight. So I'm gonna put them on here, and be, especially because this card is textured. I'm just gonna kind of drop them on. And see, they're pretty crooked, but because I'm not pressing them on, I'm gonna get them all on and then I'm gonna straighten them all up and press them down. You can do them one at a time too. Let's put one over here. Sometimes you happen to drop them on straight. Maybe you're luckier at them than I am. I very rarely drop them on straight. Okay, now switch this around. This one's pretty good. This one's really bad. This one's in a windstorm. I just think it's easier to get them all on and then mess with them than do them one at a time. Plus if one of them, if you really don't like the placement once they're all on the card, they're easier to move because they're not stuck yet. This one was pretty good actually. There we go. Rain or shine, I'm here for you. So here it is with the grape. And here's my other one. Um, and that was just the two colors. And you can see where I messed up, trying to put my little buckle on there because my card was wet. I can go back and fix it now. I didn't, I need to get ready to go to the dentist. Um, so I didn't have time for that to dry and I wanted to film. And up here, you can see where I kind of, again, it's art. So it is what it is because I wasn't, my leaves didn't stamp dark enough that I could tell where they went. So I just colored them and then I'm like, oh, I just colored white space. It's okay. I don't let it stress me. Whoever I give this to isn't gonna oh, nitpick unless it's my husband. Sometimes he's like, yeah, that's straight. Yeah, you didn't color that right because he's a little picky. So he doesn't get very many of my cards. <laughs> but for the most part, the people that you give them to are going to love them because you gave them to them. Um, and they're handmade and most of them can't make them. My husband couldn't make them. He doesn't know how. He just likes to critique because he likes things perfect. 
So there you go. Everybody have a great day. If you need a new catalog, if you've never ordered from anybody before and um, you need one and you're in the U.S., let me know because I'm always happy to send you your first copy for free. And remember, if you want that first batch that's going out, you need to place an order in March because all of those people will get theirs first. Everybody have a great one. Bye.